Yo, yo, it's ODB. This is issue 93 of Mini Trucking Magazine, September 1999. Really good issue. You have Tuck Lugs on the cover. Of course, Mini Trucking and Custom Compacts, we still see that right here. The other awesome thing about this is it's the first time we see Mike Self's name attached to a cover. He actually shot, uh, if you credit this one, he shot two covers for Mini Trucking for those. Uh, that are curious, and of course Lance Martz worked with him on this one, which we'll get into. Uh, first and only uh, cover truck with Ergon, I believe is how you pronounce it, wheels. And this truck has changed hands over time. When we had Brian Gendro on not too long ago, we actually had an opportunity to talk about it. So let's uh, jump right in. You got the BF Goodrich Burn Rubber uh, Sear Eyeballs ad. Here is the... Uh, table of contents that I like to go through. And you can see Tuck Lugs on page 50. This was Nathan Hall's truck of Vista, California. And uh, many of us, I think, just kind of, you know, I just always assumed Gendro, the chop shop, you know, it was his truck, but obviously it was it was Nathan's. Uh, the same goes for Dan's uh, Tacoma. Uh, when I had Brian Gendro on, we talked a little bit about the famous Tacoma and how I just kind of, a lot of people, I think, just assume it was his, but it was actually someone else's here. But Nathan Hall and the Chop Shop bring us this month's cover, Tuck Lugs, 84 Toyota Extra Cab. And you can see there it says photo credits go to your very own editor, Lance Martz. But again, we can't just look here. We need to look at the feature itself. And um, it's it, it's good that they, you know, they do that. Here is uh, Lance's editorial. And I don't know how much you guys really want to kind of see some of this you know I kind of at least go over it because it's in 4k you can always bump it up uh, if you wanted to kind of go through that here uh, coast to coast covers and th this was I think key here because uh, someone had mentioned um, here he says he wondered where he and his club stood with the magazine since the club home Club is home to some of the absolute best rides. I think if I remember correctly, he was talking a little bit about people would say because the editor is in a particular club or they show particular love to you know one particular city or club, he was calling out here that you know these vehicles are from all over the U.S., which I thought was kind of cool. Uh, still to this day, people feel that the editors uh, had a bias I think is the word I could use um, towards a particular club and actually I have been able to prove that um, not as fact if, if we go through and we slice and dice the numbers and we look at said editor and then we look at the the, um, the clubs that were um, on the cover during said individual's reign so to speak uh, you'll see that it, it, that's kind of thrown out um, so you know did, did a particular editor you know go and 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 kind of you know help out? Uh, a particular club member sometimes? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Chris Schmidt, you know, was very clear on how, you know, Courtney really, uh, you know, went to bat for him, you know, and saying, hey, let's run this. So, I mean, it sometimes happened, but it didn't happen to the extent that people really think. Um, here is Jared Hazelton of Citrus Heights, California. This was um, a NorCal Mini, and you can see in the paint, Kind of the Cali graphics there with um, with the, the paint itself. And uh, pretty cool. You can see super clean engine. I remember reading this feature back in the day. And it's got DuPont paint. Now, when you first look at it, I would assume, you know, a lot of people are going to think, hey, this is a Cal Concepts paint. But um, they it was Curtis Riggs had painted it i believe so just to be clear there uh here you have cal truck jam also known as california truck jamboree which is technically the name again august 15th that was the original show uh that they had they later came back with uh the spring uh event but you can see ghetto bob i believe is is you know the nickname that uh that everyone had given him back in the day that famous truck there um you've seen in some of my videos and on the podcast if you listen Al Martinez, so rest in peace to Al. Uh, he threw this uh, this show. You can see inter shows there, and ballistic. 
in the upper right corner of this flyer ad, if you will. Uh, if you like what we're doing here, leave a comment uh, for bringing back some good memories. Uh, please consider subscribing if you haven't already. It's really helping us. We're getting close to our goal of 4,000 hours watched. Shout out to Ed Eister and so many other people that continue to uh, help us, if you will, kind of in that endeavor. And uh, we certainly appreciate it. Here's Tickle Me Blind. So a real cool uh, truck. This was Bill Moore, Bill Mo to his friends. And uh, a super clean Nissan hard body going back to just a great era. Billet, tweed, stereo, you name it. Lots of good stuff. So... Um, with this cover truck, I think um, one other thing to point out, and I've shared this in the past, is uh, Tuck Lugs was also featured on the cover of Auto Sound and Security. Those magazines are very hard to come by. Um, I think at some point, Randy or one of the guys had sent us a photo of the plaque, which if you have a, a, a truck that's been featured, please send us. Uh, you can email us, ourlifestylepodcast at gmail.com, and I'd like to post those plaques whenever we talk about those features. Okay, this was Ryan Leonard's dog and um, dog, Maz dog. And here, after having his 91 Maz, Mazda Cab Plus featured in March 98 issue of Mini Trucking, that was Rabid Dog, Ryan Cochran of Belleville, West Virginia decided it was time to redo it. Now, I did post um, in the past a sport truck uh, photo of this truck. It really had an awesome run the way it was prior. Uh, some of my old friends, I remember them talking about seeing this truck and it was like the first truck that they saw that had, quote, fast bags. If you think about, uh, if you've been in air suspension long enough, you know, the quarter inch lines weren't quick and, uh, you know, guys started running valves and things like that. But uh, this was a very unique truck. If I remember correctly, it had a topper the first round, but a cab plus that had the walkthrough, the unique thing of it was you basically didn't have the rear seats, right? So... You kind of get this pretty cool feel. You got the passengers back there cruising, super clean. What I posted in the past, people have tagged Ryan, uh, so shout out to him. I don't know that he's you know super active on social media, but he has uh, chimed in a couple times. These were the Inky G Zero wheels, sixteens, if you can believe it. Back in the era when you know sixteens and seventeens were pretty big, but I always thought that these wheels. Looked great on it. I mean, sure, you could have went bigger, but, you know, to me, they they were a good match there. I uh, got the rag top, of course, sliding rag. So pretty cool stuff. Anybody that knows him uh, knows that that truck was super sick. Uh, here you have the KMC, like no other wheel ad with the ALF wheels. So, uh, again, just an epic ad, which I wish companies would have done more stuff. But Wes Allison photo, we went through that issue. Uh, what was that, the last issue? I can't believe that was the last issue we probably went through. Happy New Year to everyone. I keep telling myself I'm going to stop saying that at some point, but here I am halfway through the month still saying it. But uh, this is the first flip through, I believe, of 2023. I can't believe that. Here is the Lakefront Tour. I did get a chance to go to the show one time, not this year, but you can see Chris Schmidt's name there. Ironically enough, he owns Tuck Lux now, which is on the cover. But uh, when Chris was on, he talked about Courtney giving him the opportunity to go uh, run out and shoot, you know, freelance, if you will. And uh, that he did. Here is a Duck's truck. The There you go, the, the Nissan. And that, this truck here reminds me always, yeah, I think that was an NC truck from Texas. Uh, I always remember that truck on their old, old, old website. So they had some some pretty cool stuff on there. That was a very, very old site, though, many, many years ago. Here's Deranged, again, by Mike Self. This was Tom Lutz Photography. And uh, these Rangers, some of you guys can kind of rattle these things off. There's a, a lot of awesome ones built. I was just telling someone over the weekend at uh, Mike and John's show, EBGD, as I call it, that uh, the Rangers don't get enough love, and I think we all kind of agree on that. There's a lot of nice ones out there. You can see the tech articles. I do kind of gloss over those unless there's, you know, really anything big to cover. Here is Tuck Lugs, a ride on the wild side. And uh, you got some great photos here. Of course, it's got a sliding rag top, so you get that top angle photo. See the Colorado Custom 
steering wheel. Always like the stereo in this one, kind of with the subs mounted that way and seeing all the white in there. Uh, Gendro talked about this truck. Really, really iconic. And uh, it's cool that it's changed hands all those day, all those times, but really it has stood the test of time. Uh, we can see here it says by Lance Marks and it says photography by the author and myself. So although in the table of contents they credit Lance, you know, it is always possible that maybe Maybe Lance did, you know, these photos by himself and they had to come back and get some insert photos. I don't know. It could have just been that Mike was there and he was kind of teaching them the ropes. But it is cool, like I said before, um, how they do, you know, give credit so that we can kind of break this down. I have video of this truck shortly after it debuted. That's uh, courtesy of Steve Nielsen from Alter Images. And it was really cool to see it sitting there. I have to forget if it was Spring Splash or what show it was, but... I remember uh, that just that awesome rear cover there with the, the Lexan uh, was pretty cool. And then again, in this era, you had um, the dual needle gauge or single needle gauge, and then you had all of your switch bank. You know, that's kind of, if you think now, AccuWare and things like that, um, that this is how, you know, you had it. That was kind of high tech for the time, having the different controls, uh, if you will, right there. Uh, this, again, was shot for Auto Sound and Security as well. And uh, just a really, really iconic truck. The cool thing, again, is it has stood the test of time. I'm sure it's probably need a little refreshing, but what truck wouldn't, you know, here and there, certain things over a, a, a 20, almost 25-year run. Pretty cool stuff. Again, negative camber. This was the seventh negative camber ride on the cover. So, again, kind of reinforcing that. You know, it's it's not like, uh, you know, NC had every cover, um, you know, when, when you know, in this era. Uh, certainly, there was a good mix of vehicles, and that was important. So, we'll get through them all eventually here. We'll see how many we can get through. Uh, speaking of, I always forget this one was featured in here, Geophysics. Uh, this was also on the old, I believe, NC. Uh, no, maybe not. I'm trying to, I'm thinking of, I think the one that was the pink the pink uh, color, primer pink. Maybe that's what I'm thinking of. This one was painted by the custom shop. Uh, people have mentioned the custom shop and um, would love to talk more about those guys in the future. This was Mike Smith's 92 Geo Tracker. Super clean. What was cool is I posted Scotty the Body, as we now call him. Posted his wife's geo tracker and uh, man, I got a lot of love on that video. Man, people going, Damn, when I was in high school, I had one, or my buddies had one. I remember cruising in one, and uh, that's pretty cool because you know what? I wasn't intending to go over this, kind of forgot. I did find this photo the other day. Here is a photo of my amigo, and it's so funny because I, I want to say this might be one of only a couple photos, this might be the only one. This was my buddy John's, and I ended up buying it from him when I took my nine foe s10 off the road to kind of build it so to speak but this thing was static dropped and i uh, mean we had a lot of fun cruising around on this thing um in another lifetime it seems i do still have the purple viper key fob from it i kind of keep one thing from each of my old vehicles and that's what i got from it that's a trivia question for you in the future here's shannon bullis's low range so the famous tandem axle and uh, just a very, very cool truck. Been around a long time. Shout out to Shannon. He was uh, chiming in on some uh, posts recently. And then Skinned Alive. The famous truck from Alter Images. Which I believe Fester owns now, if I remember correctly. Steve sent us a ton of photos of it. Uh, in the past, there's actually a website um, that's got a ton of photos. I think he had linked me over. Uh, one of the first shows I went to, that I, well, I took my truck to, which would have been November 98. I was parked not too far from the Galvanator. And uh, that truck, for whatever reason, just always, it was always a discussion. I don't know if it's because of the, the fenders and things like that or what the craziness was with it, but... I always remember that term, the galvanator. Booger from NC. There's some crazy mini truck stuff going on. 
and uh, good stuff, right? So, again, uh, if you guys appreciate what we're doing here, consider subscribing and also please uh, leave a comment. So, a couple things. This is Jimmy Graham's truck, right, before it was redone with the new front end and, and all of that. Um, this is Red Hot. I saw it last weekend. First saw it in 96. Truck is still around. Um, we'd have to talk more about that in the future. A couple of these trucks are still around. This one's bounced around a lot over the years. The Blazer's still around from a separate reality. Uh, here is the Brian Batson Isuzu, which at the time was uh, Steve Smith, I believe is his name. Uh, S10 was around this way a long time. Check out the headlight covers. Looks like built specialty wheels. Got the Ranger. Now here's Rob Scepter, rest in peace. Uh, I talked to Matt recently. Shout out to Matt. He always watches these videos. He did confirm that one video I was doing, and I mentioned I thought it was Rob's truck. He did say, hey, that was Rob's. And I maybe glossed over it. It did mention his name, so... Um, much love and respect to Rob. You know, he's no longer with us, but this truck would have been shot, uh, if my calculation's correct, it got shot at this show and then it ran. Of course, we, we went through that May 99. It's the only truck that I know of that then that was reshot the one year, the, the very next year at, uh, November 99. And it was on the cover of, of May 2000. So you talk about a quick turnaround. Uh, shout out to, again, Rob Scepter and his family. Rest in peace, Rob. Amazing truck. Here you see some more photos. You got that uh, rodeo was here around here a long time. Real clean S10. The hopping was always big. Uh, speaking of Randy, Randy Frederick, who last owned this before it went to Chris. This was Randy's Nissan, which Matt Torgerson, who I was just talking about that built Rob's truck, body drop this thing and I have a photo I think standing right back here of this his tag was slammed I am I always remember that this was a really really cool truck I always liked it and uh you know Rob always or excuse me Matt always built some very cool stuff Eric Cryan's uh famous truck that he owns he told me he didn't own that long because someone offered him a big chunk of cash I remember talking to Ryan literally at this show right where this track this this truck is sitting and I was intrigued by the headlights because he had the Blazer headlights and I was young in the scene. And he said, yeah, man, just hit the junkyard and um, get you some. That's what he did. And Greg Savoy saw him last weekend too. Uh, that was back when Greg was putting WWW on his on his uh, truck just to come up with something. And we go, it's not even a real website, Greg. <laughs> Razzing him. And speaking of Matt Torgerson, there you go. Cruising. Cruising's not a crime. There he is. He drove that S10 all over the country. I remember him telling me one or two times across the country. And uh, just a good guy. Shout out to Matt. Alter Images ad. So you have Dustin Haven's uh, Dime. And Derek's, rest in peace to Derek, his Mazda. But Alter, uh, you know, they were starting to really expand at that point and, and sell a lot of different stuff. Here's a rare full size. This is the one that Truck and Magazine ended up building, Cal Concepts painted. That truck, the rumor was it was crushed. And I think Brian McCormick, I think I talked to him when it was on when when um when he was on uh this truck. He told the story. I don't know if it was officially crushed or it kind of was, and then they there was something done. But the rumor for years was that this truck was crushed, and it was because it was a pre-production model. You can imagine 90, you know, 88 to 98s being phased out, right, with the new 99 body style. So this was kind of a way for them to get that truck, out, you know, that, that new body style out to the enthusiast and build it. I'd have to go back. That's one thing that slipped my mind. I do believe it was crushed, though, uh, or there's some other crazy extenuating st uh, story behind it. Street Beat 98. Check out those billets right there. Those are what, the Cortez Colorado Custom, maybe? Super sick, that era, it's all coming back, y'all. If you see something in here in particular, comment, you know, hey, at the such and such mark, you know, that was Joe Schmo's truck. I appreciate that stuff. And here you have the totally polished Ranger that was on issue two of Tailgate. Pretty cool truck. Uh, someone chimed in. They said, man, I wish I still had it. Um, but uh, yeah, very cool color on that one. The Rustler. Check that thing out.
those weren't too, too popular on our scene, but there's one. Here is 562. Again, I believe that was a spinoff of KMC Wheels based upon what we've seen and I've kind of talked about. Uh, there's the bla there's a blazer in the Chassis Tech ad. Chassis Tech was huge for years. I think they're still technically around. Here's a Divine Creation. This was Jeremy Smalls of Phoenix and um, super popular in this era. A 96 Acura Integra. Uh, we had Adrian in our Florida chapter for a long time. We haven't really talked to her in a bit, but uh, she moved out here. She had a four-door Integra, so uh, pretty cool stuff there. Bright ideas, so low glow right there, add. And this ad ran forever. You get the Moz Dog, some of the smaller ads, and then boom, here you got Mr. Phil Fowler, the OG. We'll see him at Mini Nats, third weekend in April. We hope to see you guys up there. Here is uh, Ahead of You, aka Sideshow, Sean Dell's. Tacoma, one for show. I believe that's Travis Novak's tag from his uh, C10. Altered States, Forever Low, Low Fat. I remember seeing this one in Florida. Man, I haven't seen this in forever. Low Fat, that was a that was a Florida guy. Of course, it's a Florida tag, but the state of the art tag. And then, boom, you have MIC really coming in strong. Ironically enough, we just had Rob Maggi on, and Rob uh, was the owner. And you can see, we talk about how they continue to expand uh, with all of these different uh, products. And plenty of people have asked me, can they buy these valves? And uh, Rob is going to look into that, believe it or not. But I would ask, please check out that episode. You can listen here on YouTube. I would uh, really highly suggest you download Podbean or try a different podcast app uh, that really um, is much appreciated. So again, issue 93. September 99, and uh, big ups to N Negative Camber. I think it was their seventh cover, I said. Great one. We know Lance uh, and Mike Self shot it based upon the credits that were given. Appreciate all the support. Stay on the rise, and let's make 2023 the best year possible. We are you. Subscribe. Peace.